As Late Line Business reported last night, the federal court has ruled that property group Centro's board of directors broke the law by failing to disclose billions of dollars of short-term liabilities. Well, today we sent our gun reporter Andrew Robertson out to talk to directors around town, but most were still digesting what it all means. But we can bring you expert analysis. Dr Bob Austin is now a senior legal advisor at Minter Ellison. He's also a former professor of company law and co-author, indeed, of the standard text and a former judge of the Supreme Court. Court, and I spoke with him earlier. Dr. Bob Austin, welcome to the program. Thanks, Diggy. Well, I salute you as one of the few who've uh, read the whole of the Centro judgment. Is it the landmark decision that ASIC claims? It is a landmark decision, but not quite for the reason ASIC claims. What it does is to take the standard of care in relation to financial statements up a few notches. Uh, the old case has said that directors have to have basic uh, financial literacy, but now uh, what's being said is that the directors have to do more. They have to have a basic understanding of accounting standards, sufficient to know, for example, the difference between current and non-current liabilities. So if you're a non-executive director sitting on a listed company board and you've got some expertise in the company's business like uh, research or design or, or communications, uh, but you don't have much skills in the accounting area, and I'm sure there are a lot of directors like that, how should you be feeling now? I think this is all about public companies. I think the standard of basic financial literacy is probably the same for the, the small company, but for a public company... What you have to do is actually read the financial statements before you sign off on them uh, and you have to apply the knowledge you have about the company gained from any source uh, to, uh, to test what's said in the financial statements and then to ask questions if you're not satisfied. Now Justice Middleton rather importantly said the directors could not rely on the external advice of auditors or, or other experts as a defence. Doesn't this change the due diligence defence of reasonable reliance that we always used to have? Well, no, I don't think he said you can't rely. In fact, what he said was that for the most part you can rely on technical expertise being uh, provided to you. Uh, but there are limits to reliance, and I think that's what you're getting at. Right. Uh, you have to apply an inquiring mind. You have to have an assessment of, of uh, uh, just what you think the um, financial statements are really saying. Didn't you have to have that before, though? You had to ask reasonable questions, didn't you? Well, a lot of directors, I think, might have thought that if they're talking about signing off on the financial statements, the question they should ask is, uh, are, the, are the auditors satisfied and are the audit committee satisfied? And if they get yes answers to that, uh, then they sign. But now, just as Middleton says, no, they have to read, they have to apply their knowledge, their knowledge of basic accounting standards, and make sure they personally are satisfied. And they have to do all that with an inquiring mind. Now, interestingly, with Centro, I mean, at issue was this $2 billion of, of undisclosed current liabilities. PricewaterhouseCoopers signed off on the, the accounts. Why didn't they pick it up? Well, uh, at, at the time there was some confusion about the transition from GAAP accounting standards to the International Financial Reporting Standards. So this is in terms of classifying what was current and what was not current? It, particularly on that issue. It has to be said that Justice Middleton was careful not to make any particular finding against the auditors because he explained that he hadn't had evidence directed specifically to their position. But they did sign off on the accounts. And that obviously was one of the things the directors said that they relied on. And, and yet the judge said that the directors should have spotted this. Why? Well, it was so obvious in the judge's assessment. Uh, he read the, uh, the new accounting standards and he said quite clearly that this uh, two billion or so dollars uh, was... Uh, it related to liabilities that were due in the current year. That clearly meant to him that these were current liabilities. It was also in their board papers, I know. I mean, it was in a schedule to their board papers, as I understand it. And one of the defences of, of the directors was that they were snowed by volumes uh, of, of papers uh, uh, and had to get through an, an awful lot. But that didn't fly with the judge. No, certainly not. This is an important statement. Um, there were about 3,000 pages of uh, material in relation to the financial statements, and each board pack every month was about 450 pages. Um, what the judge said was it's within the control of the directors to determine how much information they get. Now, the facts of this case were relatively simple. What is going to happen when we've got more complicated accounting issues, you know, hybrid debt, uh, hedging positions, uh, the issue of trading while insolvent? I think we're starting off on a new chapter in this part of 
company law. Um, I think that uh, when you're looking at more complicated cases, the issue will be just how far into the accounting standards are directors of public companies now required to get. Uh, clearly, Justice Middleton thought this was an obvious and straightforward point, but as you say, there'll be, there'll be harder cases. Let me ask you, I see the James Hardy case is now headed to the High Court. Uh, that's got uh, the, the uh, position of directors front and centre. Do you think this decision will have an impact on it? Um, well, it, it depends what issues are ultimately raised in the High Court, and we don't have the, the full scope of the High Court hearing yet because there's still a prospect that there might be applications for leave to cross-appeal by the directors. It's possible that issues of reliance on others might be raised in a somewhat different context. Whereas the Centro case was all about financial statements and reliance on the auditing team, um, in James Hardy it was all about a market announcement claiming that the foundation for asbestos victims was fully funded. But again, the directors raised at first instance issues about reliance on others uh, in the context of uh, what uh, Justice Gazelle found was their approval of that market announcement. Um, if that issue uh, comes to the High Court, then what is said in the Centro case will be relevant, but we might get uh, a, an authoritative pronouncement by our highest court on just what extent, um, to what extent directors can rely on others in making difficult decisions. Dr Bob Weston, thank you very much for your perspective tonight. It's a pleasure.